as if whatever every all scene- right recording progress and also marco is joining and lastly uh yeah if you can answer my zoom problem let's talk about it uh but we are officially recording and i'll let marco in now I shut down my video because my audio was glitching to save bandwidth and it's I'm gonna turn it back on and see what happens. Yeah, let us know if we can help. Okay. Is Marco there? Yep. Yeah, he's he's joining getting set up. Is Oscar gonna make it? Maybe. I put in the chat. Uh, go for it, but looks like with his school schedules tight. Okay. He, he... I'll check the chats real quick to see if we're okay. Yeah, you know what? I, I think I may want to reboot to Windows. I'm not sure because this is the first time I'm running it in Linux and my audio is doing funny thing. Well, your audio sounds great on this end, just FYI. Okay. Well, then if I shut my video it's off, I might just be doing that just to save bandwidth of it so I can hear better. Sounds great. Uh, Shaw Cruz, you got good uh, comms. And then uh, also mm -hmm. uh, Marco uh, coming through pretty okay. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hello. So um, a quick uh, in intro here is, uh, you know, uh, Oscar uh, may or may not make it, uh, but Doug, myself, and Chuck Cruz, uh, simple, simple answer. Uh, we uh, will ask uh, to get the conversation kicked off uh, simply, uh, hey, you know, why would you like to, to join uh, the uh, EOS uh, Translation Foundation team on Fractally? And if you'd like to uh, diverge from that question and, and talk, uh, we'd be glad just to listen to uh, things you'd like to talk about. But welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, um, Doug, Mark, um, Shock Cruz. Is that how you say it? Yes, Shock Cruz. Shock Cruz. Um, well, uh, cultural diversity is something I've always been around. Uh, the value of translation is something that uh, I hold close to heart. Um, I don't know if you guys read what I wrote in, uh, in Telegram, um, but uh, I grew up in New York Metro. Uh, my education has always been uh, culturally diverse. Um, and that's where I gravitate, gravitated toward. Um, well, I don't speak another language. I used to when I was young. Uh, my studies have always been to uh, test the limits of where cultures mingle. Um, I'm in aviation. Uh, my degrees are in, are in aviation. Um, and you just can't have uh, that economy, that lifestyle without understanding it. Um, blockchain takes it to a whole new level by uh, making things a lot more personal um, on these levels, on these different cultural uh, spheres and stuff. Um, I don't know what this translation team has been really doing. Um, I've been monitoring the chat from time to time. Uh, so I don't know what uh, I can bring right now. Um, but I'm in on Fractally, um, and this is one of the first teams, or the second team, I believe. Um, so, uh, oh, the thing that got me uh, inspired was the uh, reply to my to a Twitter comment I made that uh, few people, I believe, uh, harbor uh, those thoughts, let alone. Uh, will stand up for them. Ooh. You want to talk more about that? Because I'm so curious. 
Yeah, I posted I'm not, I'm not it in there, but basically, yeah, it's basically um, how there's a push. Uh, well, you have crypto funds, crypto mutual funds. Uh, they respond, um, the prices go up and down with Dow, essentially making the whole crypto market stable, uh, which makes the whole thing um, uh, move. <laughs> Um, EOS, there's no reason that it should respond that way, the way Bitcoin does or Ethereum does, because it's so much faster. It, 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 it just boggles the mind. Um, so paying that attention is, I believe, a big deal. Something people don't want to get into. Uh, people talk about crypto as a stock. They talk about the price, but they don't talk about its function. Uh, and digital assets are function, not uh, prices. We're talking about moving assets across uh, uh, global accounting ledgers. We're not talking about uh, prices. Prices come after the digital asset that we assign to it because assets are consumables. Uh, prices are means of exchanges. Now, while we can use um, mom's apple pie as a medium of exchange, or tulips, um, they are ultimately consumables. Prices are not. Uh, anyway, I'm done. I'll, I think I think that's all of it. Yeah, that's uh, exciting. I was looking back at your uh, your tweet, and I haven't found it. Um, but uh, we, I think I get the idea uh, sufficiently, um, and um, and uh, like explicitly, I, I I'd look forward to uh, to talking more about. That. Uh, yeah, because uh, crypto is a utility, uh, uh, boy, uh, yes, 99%. Uh, and, and one of those utilities uh, would be uh, currency, a good storage of goods and services, haha, ha, yay, happy. Um, and uh, the Dow tying, that's an interesting thought you had about the Dow tying into the large crypto, lethargic cryptocurrency space because maybe of a liquidity issue that EOS does not have because EOS has late, low latency and low fees for quick transactions to re-accommodate whatever it wants. It doesn't have to necessarily tie to the DAO, maybe, but those are all interesting ideas. And uh, uh, I'd, I'd pass it off uh, to uh, Shop Cruz and Doug uh, for, for conversation and chat. Uh, I could definitely uh, chat. Uh, I have thoughts and uh subjects of like uh, say what we're doing uh and uh, if you shuck Cruz and doug would like to defer to me uh please uh, say so and uh i'll give uh i'll give marco an intro but otherwise do you have any thoughts and comments um okay uh what would they from what i've heard first uh what do we do here in uh at the team and uh i can um I might help you by telling you why I am I why am I on the team? Why did I join your translation foundation? And what do we do? And what do I do on this team? Because I don't know. Mark and Douglas are doing a lot of things. Uh, first of all, uh, we were the first unofficial team that's not founded by uh, fractally team members. You know, full time paid employees of fractally company. So we are uh, we were the first to organize a team. And so we have this uh, first uh, <clears throat> mover. It's not an advantage, but just this flag that we hold. Like we did it for the first time. And that's, I think that's uh, mostly contributed to uh, what Mark has done. Mark did organize all of us and proposed to organize it. Did the channel, did the logo, we had the Zoom, we, we pushed the button, we announced it, and now we do have a team officially that's on the uh, fractally roster of teams, right? We have now three teams and we are the second one and we get points, we get extra respect for doing that. That is the first simple, plain, for, plain simple uh, think why we did this just to get more respect and just to try the procedure of creating a team is that correct mark that, that's how we did it's it. lovely it's yeah lovely and it, and and in that uh, process by the way for your sake marco we did document uh the team mission 
And then we also created a qualificated team purpose. So you'll be able to see what Shaw Cruz has just said in writing if you go up to the pinned messages or, oh, Oscar is joining uh, also. But I think what we just said is, is key. So the pinned messages, you may have to go up to like the, uh, or you can, you can click on my, uh, my two-dimensional bar graph on my, uh, my background if you like. That'll take you to the page. It also has the purpose and everything, the mission and purpose. See, so we're all uh, just connecting right now, and I'm going to connect Oscar in the meantime. So, so uh, there was nothing specifically that we had to do, or that we were trying to do, or that we were doing. We didn't have an agenda. We didn't have any any other commitments. There, other than going every Saturday. Uh, on the on the meetings uh, on fractally meetings on Zoom, get some respect and share the respect in the team. I I like to chime in on that too because uh, I I uh, I reflect that sentiment um, because I'm I'm pretty new to the EOS fractally ecosystem, and when I started engaging with fractally in the Zoom chats. I found a huge qualitative difference in experience that was much more beneficial to me personally, just from a learning experience. Having a team members that I can have, you know, share ideas and feedback off of has been just such a valuable thing for me that I, uh, you know, I've, I've just com completely benefited from it as an individual. But more importantly, part of the reason why I jumped on the EOS translation team is that I had a, a small bit of uh, unique knowledge in language translation that I derived off of a third party uh, application that I used to do language translation and um, YouTube video management of SRT files and whatnot. And so because I had some sort of uh, experience with that in the EOSBs and the Translate Me Foundation were trying to design something, you know, my uh, involvement and input and dialogue in there has been I would say very valuable because um, I'm thinking about things from an ideal standpoint, like what I'd like to see at the final end run, whereas a lot of what's happening is they're trying to deal with the immediate need situation. And I'm trying to sort of like lay out, uh, this is where I see things are going and uh, whatnot. And so one of the interesting things that came out of that was uh, Jesse, and this, tr this conversation is going on and it's, as we speak, is uh, Jesse's interest in creating um, transcript articles out of the content generated in YouTube videos and the, what's involved with that and whatnot. And the SEO side of it, that's another aspect uh, to the EOS ecosystem that I feel is really weak is, uh, you know, so much effort promoted to uh, publish to chain or do things with the blockchain, but, you know, overlooking all the obvious best practices just for getting the content and information out there and then wanting to rely on, you know, hosted services like YouTube or Twitter or whatever. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, eh, I don't know if this is the best way about it. So um, that's sort of my perspective. And then, um, you know, quite honestly, uh, Marco, I'm, I'm sort of selfish. <laughs> like I've, I, and a lot of times, and I'm, I'm very off topic. I just have an intense curiosity and interest in figuring out what value I can create in this ecosystem and what value it's creating for me. And so there's a lot of times when I'm engaging with my team over what I call off topic, questionably off topic subjects. And Mark has been kind enough to sort of like corral my energy and enthusiasm in a way that's been constructive for me. And, you know, at least someone else will witness it. And so that's, yeah. fun. Uh, you know, it's been fun for me. Uh, uh, <laughs> A good example of that is, uh, you know, Doug mentioned SEO, search engine optimization, um, and uh, say general communications um, with that in mind. Um, and we're thinking that there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a value shared between say a marketing or communication group and a translation group. <laughs> so that yeah, value huge. shared. So, so I won't be surprised if when the next, few weeks or what have you uh, once we can get like this kind of project management board uh start starting to be used because we're really close oscar has done great he set up uh he set up uh the the, the project management board on notion and uh, all we need to do is start rolling in our weekly uh contributions to fractally we need an area of that 
to start logging it all. And then we need to have a space to put, say, sub sub uh, sub in, uh, sub categories of our function, and and one of them obviously translation. Because Shaw Cruz come up with that a week ago, said we want to be translating fractal documents everything yesterday. So we put out the word to say, could we get access to to a tool that we're already sponsoring that the bees has now and in, been gun to integrate uh we want we want that also so we could just start doing stuff on our own to be able to do similar stuff that the bees are doing in this case just for fractally dedicated <laughs> so so that's that's a another dynamic that will will take some um settling in on and because you don't know about translate me the kernel the neural network or the tokenization path or the discussions and stuff like that. But all that is secondary. I think what's primary is like the interest and like the heart. Uh, but uh, uh, I'd say uh, I'll hand it over to uh, both at the same time, Oscar and Shaw Cruz. But before Oscar, go ahead, Shaw Cruz. And then Oscar, whenever you're ready, you uh, just find a, a way to roll in. I'd like to complete my introduction because the first thing I said is this group is experimental and uh, we need it to get more respect. That is first thing. Second thing is, yes, yes, we do translate. So our team named translation, not by chance, it's on purpose. We do translate. I do translate things to Russian because I'm bilingual. My native language is Russian and I translated all the material yesterday on Fractally, whatever is present on Fractally.com is translated to Russian and available on the Russian ver on Fractally-ru.com. So I bought the, the domain and I put up the website and put all the material that's translated there. So anyone Russian speaking can watch the uh, keynote in Russian, read the, pay the uh, book, more equal animals in Russian, the white paper fractally in Russian, blog posts in Russian, and they can join uh, a Russian speaking telegram group by link that's on also published over there. So, and everything that's gonna come out is gonna be translated and put there. That's, I see that as I see, that is how I see uh, my strategy of uh, gaining respect on fractally. Uh, again, I'm here for to, to my, I'm mining respect, I'm mining tokens and I'm, I'm I'm, I, I'm estimating them. I'm, I'm valuing them as, as real money that's gonna, I'm going to get in the future. That's why I'm here. And that's how I measure what's my contribution. If I do contribute things and I do get something valuable, then this is important. So I do get respect. And with, this, with the translation strategy, uh, you can get uh, quite a lot of respect uh, during fractal meetings. That's what I figured out because I... I'm not sure if I'm still now in top 10, but I used to be in top 10 by respect, by rank, whatever it is, just by translating things using AI. I use deeple.com and just complete the translation with my understanding of uh, the terms and, 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 and the context. So we are making more respect by being a team. Second, we are gaining respect by translating material into other languages. That's what we do here. Are you? Would you like to join us doing the same thing, committing to Saturday yeah. meetings and translating things into other languages? Yes, I've been attending the past um, eight or so meetings. You said fractally. Dot ru. Dot dash. That dash ru. Dot dash. Oscar, are you uh, muted? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Was listening to. Uh, let me put my my hand. All right. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, it's a great morning here. Uh, it's nice to see you around here. It's it's always good to to meet up with you. Now, with the pleasure of having Mac and Bird. What's your name again? I I, I think I missed it. Marco Marco Gonzalez. Oh, uh, it's Marco. Okay, hey Gonzalez, just like me too. I'm Oscar Gonzalez too. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> I finally put that together. I said, "Oh shit!" Ah, oh, Jesus! All right, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if we have it very uh, far away, linked somewhere. 
because there are a lot of Gonzales in here too. That's neat. Uh, well, I'm my... Puerto Rican Cuban, and I spell it with a Z, which I believe you spell yours with a Z as well, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, my native language is Spanish, but uh, I'm bilingual, so I'm also translating a lot of things into all the way into Spanish. I haven't really done much in in translating fractally material, but I have been translating ES material before. But this time I want to to focus on on fractally too, because as Chakra says, that is very useful for for the fractally mission. And I do identify with the with the mission of the ES Translation Foundation, which is a uh, increasing the bandwidth of the of the different language language speaking communities. Uh, we are focused on ES. And I am very sure that you don't really uh, that none of us missed the 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 chat from yesterday. It became a little wild, <laughs> but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we are not aligned. At least in my in my opinion, in in the way I see it, that doesn't mean that that our objectives have to differ or be completely opposite to, to what Fractal is doing. In the Fractal white paper, it says that it is supposed to be a, a chain agnostic kind of governance project, which is something very good once you think of it, because the ES community can have its own space if they wish it, if they wish to have it. And so other so can other communities. So the one, one example of this is, for example, I, I, I met one of the guys in one of the rooms uh, in one of the meetings I, I don't remember his name but he wasn't from ES. he was from from another from a different community and he said that he liked it so not only not only the ES community can adopt this kind of governance strategy but also other communities so i think this is a place for us to share and have a uh, find a common ground where we can you know be ourselves and maybe make peace with other communities, which in in a way in which we can do it otherwise. Because let's be honest, if we find other communities on Twitter, it's not very common. They are wholesome, okay? They're not very wholesome on Twitter. So what they do, they are it's very frequently attacking each other, which is which really does no good to any of us. But in here, we can have a, a at least a forty five minute room in which we all get get along and we all contribute to the same to the same goal which is something i really like uh yeah like shakru said we're here to translate to to get the word out and also try to use fractally as a way to organize ourselves as a team to you know further develop the the, the translations or uh, learning and services for everyone because i've had this discussion before with, with with members of the Spanish community because they're everywhere and they are writing English, but that doesn't mean they speak it. So very common, it's very common to me to see something that it's not very well translated. So I see and I'm like, mm, you know, this is not very well interpreted or it's either not very well interpreted or it's not within context. So you kind of get lost or confused. For example, a lot of, a lot of terms need to stay the same in in spanish you can just translate the words for example wrapping wrapped tokens or bridging stuff like that you you, you just can't translate that you, it, it would be a lot better if we have like a bank like a like a glossary of terms where you store all these terms that cannot be cannot be translated but you put them in the same place in the same place and you explain what they mean so translator, a lot of all the different translators can come all the way here and check. All right, do we translate the word bridge, or what, do we translate the word wrapping? So when they see it, they're they say, all right, now let's just keep it that way, or let's explain somehow and not make a mess. Because otherwise, for example, I saw once that the word trust from trust EVM in Spanish means uh, something very similar to confidence. It would be like uh, they translated translated it literally to uh, a confianza, EVM, which is not right. And 
I saw it, and the the Princess B from the, from the Spanish Hive also saw it, and he was like, "No, no, no, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be translating this because this is a proper a proper name. So let's better keep it the same way." And since then, I've been uh, proofreading and rechecking everything they translate because uh, we we don't want to confuse people because at the end, what we what we could do is confuse the the, the users the newcomers that don't know anything about this. So yeah, our, our goal is ultimately to make this, uh, to, let's say, um, uh, lessen the friction there is for newcomers to the community. And from the ones that are already are here to have access to the information and to the same, to the same privileges. Because right now it is a privilege to the to the English speakers to have access to all the the documents and information that there is, and I say it is a privilege because people from other from other communities that speak another language they just have, they don't have the same opportunity. So that's our goal to make this easy and make the transition from make this transition simple for for new users. I think that's where the way I see it. As um, <laughs> as tough as it is to translate um, across uh, even the alpha uh, alpha numeric languages, um, it's got to be uh, mountains harder across um, Asian and uh, Arabic, Sanskrit. Um, but that's not, that's not even where it starts. It, it starts with. Uh, here's a here's a perfect example of uh, what uh, Eves has said about um, the uh, the Mandel upgrade. Um, he said we got to stop calling it a hard fork because that's just not how EOS works. Yeah, um, yeah, right. that's right. <laughs> a, a great example of this uh, nomenclature. So I want to say uh, that uh, we have have only recently reached out to our, call it, kind of developer group for AI trans, AI proofing, which is a pre-translation, uh, uh, wash, a wash cycle, so to speak. And uh, then uh, it, 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 it uh, there is a, uh, a marketplace or basically a UI that, uh, uh, provides an administrator to assign a white list of, of translators uh, per language. And all they do is they click each of those languages. So all those whitelisted folks under each of those languages will be suddenly assigned, tagged, whatever, and they send the document. So say it's 50 to 75% washed already through the AI. And now on the user side, the translator side, they get a bunch of flags across all these languages. There are whitelisted people in their inbox and there's a dollar amount and a deadline. And then they go, okay, I'm gonna click on that. Here's the original text. It's got peg token. It's got a uh, uh, hard fork. It's got whatever. And then they have another tab that has the same thing, but it's the translated. So they fix it. Now call it, it's 98% complete. Then they say, send it, goes back to the administrator soon i hope that will be we, we will have that set up but but this is all coming together okay but basically then at the administrator level we'll say wait that's 98 percent. that that person didn't understand the eves larose hard fork soft fork side and we're really sensitive to that okay we're, we're taking that out it's, it's no longer we're hard forking this we're updating the code okay that document's finished send it and in in all those languages the thing is finalized so to cut through the problem, we have ideas and not just ideas. These are already beyond demonstration. There's thousands of translators that are on those available pools for finishing up to the 98% level. So hopefully we'll get that set up. I don't think Ryan is gonna have a problem uh, setting that up for the Translation Foundation uh, because uh, of our, our uh, we're, we're kind of uh, eating at the same dinner table. 
And uh, so, uh, so um, I just wanted to speak to the solution side of this good problem. And I think we all understand the original idea behind uh, the problem. Uh, and uh, I hope we understand that there's reason to be hopeful in that, that we'll be able to, uh, to speak to this real annoying idea that we can't do that. I think we can. And I think we'll soon uh, finish appropriately, finish a translation with all the, no, the varietal nomenclatures. Oh, like we can absolutely some, can. That's not the issue. The issue is consistency, but I saw uh, Sean Cruz. Yeah, yeah good. I, uh, that's glad that's hurt. Yeah, let's. Uh, we, we do have a uh, little time to le uh, left because I have I have another meeting. So what I need from you, Mark, right now to uh, make a decision uh, because we need to approve your uh, candidacy to join the team, right? And I'd like to know but more about you. Uh, I've seen you uh, a few a couple of times during the meeting fractally. I know your name is Marco Gonzalez, right? And uh, just a little bit about if, if we are done here, if you understand what this group is about, what this team is about, and um, I'd like to know about you a little bit more, just your age, where are you where are you from, what do you do, why are you, and why are you um, at Fractally? Like, why do you care about Fractally? So I have a question before before you go on, Ravana. It's a very simple question because I I believe I read somewhere that you are one of the writers from the ES Weekly. Is this correct? Not one of the writers. <laughs> uh, for the past more, for over a year, I've been writing ES Weekly alone. Nice. Ah, nice. very nice. Mm -hmm. And ES Weekly goes way back, doesn't it? Like three years. And there's a lot of translation work we yeah. or the EOS Kiko system could benefit from from having his content translated too. You know, just something to think about, even though that's not a fractally related topic. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good point, Doug. Yeah, interesting. I mean, I, I don't mind talking to Marco about, afterwards and helping him with that. <laughs> no, yeah, I, basically, I like that idea yeah. too. I like that idea too. I, I mean, I have a a very good sense of where we can put the the that information. But let's talk about that later because uh, we're short on time, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Fire, fire away, Marco. And then at, when you're done, we'll, we'll try to bring the, the meeting to a close uh, afterwards uh, with anybody else's uh, chiming in on the, in, on the backside. Uh, well, how far back do you guys go with your uh, personal stuff? <laughs> well, let's keep it close to Fractally and EOS. So we have, you know. All right, I jumped into um, blockchain because of aviation. Well, I wanted to get into Bitcoin when I first heard of it, but uh, didn't have the money and didn't have the time. Um, and that was probably 2014. I'm not a computer developer, but I've had computer friends. Um, and again, you know, life just didn't really afford it to uh, get in as a hobby. Um, so I always wanted in, but when I saw when I saw when I started going for my degree in aviation, um, the only answer for the accounting, a lot of the issues of the uh, digital world we live in was blockchain. Um, the first use case I found was medical research. Um, and I tried looking deeper to see applications for aviation. Uh, being used that I can use in my thesis. I didn't find it, so instead I used uh, the uh, mobile devices, how they're going to integrate, how they are integrating with the uh, next generation air transportation system, because I believe that mobile, how mobile develops and how uh, blockchain develops uh, will come to terms and uh, will fly side by side. Right now, we don't have that. Right now, we have the graphics. Um, things for the graphic graphic miners for Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, changing the digital landscape and those things are not mobile. But there are some mobile blockchains. So I did explore them back then. Um, the 
it, but after that, the next thing is aviation is function. Aviation cuts things off because you can't fly with what you can put on a shipping container. You can't fly with what you can put on a train. That economy is now subject to us, to aviation, which is subject to the digital accounting world. Um, so function was what I was looking for. And that's where I found delegated proof of stake. And I got into um, hovering around Steemit uh, before uh, Dawn was proposed. So I saw that thing start to take off. Um, I began hitting Steemit hard when I found out EOS was going to be a thing. And I saw that um, take, I saw that born. Um, I wanted to get in then, I just, again, didn't have any funds for it. So I got in kind of on the back end of the uh, Genesis thing. Um, and I saw what happened with Steam and I been in security, so I understand um, how the whole corporate espionage to stabilization and all that stuff works. And it was clear that um, if it happened to Steam in that way, there's no way that it wouldn't chase it down to EOS in some way. Um, I don't know if B1 had good intentions from the start, but that doesn't matter because that's how it ends up anyway. So to tell you how dedicated I am to uh, the vision that Dan had, uh, my uh, wallet is the mission statement behind the wallet mock wire for EOS is a uh, news wire, not a newsletter or um, EOS Weekly, a news wire. And if you're from New York and you've ever been through rush hour taking the newspapers like I did back in the 80s, um, you understand what a wire is. And essentially that ticker, that stock ticker. But instead of looking for the stocks, you're looking for the uh, blast of news that comes in there once in a while, warning of war, warning of tragedy, warning of uh, weather uh, or something big um, every 15 minutes or so. So that's why Mockwire for EOS was created before I ever got my, that's my first wallet um, back then. Fractally, I see it taken it to the next level. As Dan had said, it integrates everything with the bit shares and stuff. Bit shares is actually something I missed. I don't know if it was before me or whatever. I tried getting into that. That's pretty sick stuff. Um, but I followed it later. Uh, but anyway, Dan says how it ties it in and yeah, I love the idea of having a cross-platform, and um, I have yet have yet to find another blockchain that is as functional as EOSIO. Yeah, thanks a million, man. Uh, it's uh, it's really great listening to you, and um, I think I could speak to the group in that regard. I think I could speak for for the group probably in that regard. It's really good to to listen to you have you here um so uh i'll uh, open it up here momentarily for anyone else who wants to say anything but here's how we'll structure it that is we'll soon bring this meeting to a close and then our group will have a another closed meeting and we'll uh and then we'll we'll come back at you and say uh, you know boom boom or something in the middle and uh, that least business uh as far as i'm concerned with this this meeting has has been checked has been taken care of uh, now any last thoughts? Uh, anyone if like to uh, chime in? Yeah, I, I'd just like to say, Marco, I, I'm happy you're here, and I'd love to see you be part of the team. And I'm really having fun just getting to meet the different players in the ecosystem. And um, I'd love to get to know you more and see whatever it is you're up to and see how we can synergize, regardless if you get accepted to this team or not. <laughs> And I, yeah. I'd like to say that if we uh, uh, come to a consensus that you're joining the team, uh, I'd love to hear your interview like we did with Mark. Probably you could just yeah, uh, we could have somebody call you and uh, just record uh, your uh, your internal interview for our team, it's like like an introduction. Things that are farther farther away from fractally and EOS, but they reflect you because we are we are a team. We have this chance to get to know each other and, and become friends and become partners and do things in, in real life, not just in fractally, but in general as well. So if 
Well, if that's where we are, um, I guess I got to ask the hot topic. Uh, if you're Russian, um, how do you feel about what's going on? Well, I'm not Russian uh, per se. I'm uh, I'm Jewish and I'm Uzbek, and uh, uh, but I speak Russian is my native language because I was born in Soviet Union. I was born I'm born in Central Asia, uh, which was part of Soviet Union, Uzbekistan and uh, Tashkent. Uh, and my parents they speak spoke they speak Russian most of the time. They swear in Uzbek sometimes. It's like second language for them, but it became third language for me because I speak English much better than I speak Uzbek language, which is a local uh, language. And I, uh, uh, well, regarding what, what's happening and what's going on and what do I feel about it is that I, I know that um, there is violence that is being uh, done by uh, people who uh, pretend to be, they say we are the government, we do have the guns and all your money, so we're gonna fight with those guys over that fence because we need more space or we have some our own other agenda, whatever. So we're gonna use our guns and gonna go and shoot people. That's what they do. I have no fucking, uh, I have no, um, how to say, connection to what they do. I have no say on that. I have no do on that. I don't participate on that. So these guys are killing because... some other guys. Yeah, and, and I'm not political. I'm, I'm not siding either. with any one I of those either. people, uh, you know, shooting and doing violence uh, on other people. Because I that's the game every, they play. That's every the app they, is... They Every app is supporting Ukraine. The flag is whenever I open an app. It's, what, it's what, what is Ukraine? I don't. I don't. Well, you know what these names? I just figured they'd come to you. Ukraine. <laughs> these are just brands of corporations. These are just brands. I, how do I fight for a brand? No, if they come they, to me and the place I live, I might fight for this location. You know, just just to uh, you know to fight somebody who messages. is going to. But One I don't really lessons it, for a student pilot is um, not expecting to see the uh, state or national lines um, on the ground when you're flying over them. Um, it's a big deal because while you don't see the state or national lines, you do <laughs> you get the uh, state uh, radio lines when you're crossing mm -hmm. over. And uh, just going from the U.S. to Mexico, we have a great relationship with Mexico. Uh, pilots are insanely um, apprehensive about the potential fines they'll get uh, because the airspace rules change. So if you're flying legally at 5,000 feet, you cross over to Mexico, you may have to jump 1,000, 2,000 feet um, mm -hmm. instantly. And those are open borders. Um, are you a pilot, Marco? Do you, do you, can you fly? I learned to land an aircraft under New York airspace. Nice. Well, you do. You know how to do that. I know how to land. Uh, oh. How long have How long have you been in aviation? Most of your life. Uh, well, I was gifted something in aviation when I was very, very young. Something I always wanted to do. Something I put on my bucket list. And um, after working in a library, um, I just couldn't stop reading Runner's World and aviation magazines. So I went to uh, finish a couple of degrees in aviation just because I knew if there was one thing that I couldn't stop uh, thinking about, talking about uh, improving, it was aviation. Um, so I can say all my life, but I can say uh, educationally um, for over 10 years um, and yeah, ties into a lot of stuff. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, uh, so uh, is there anyone else that wants to chime in? No, I'm very happy that, that we get to do this uh, from from time to time. Actually, Mark, uh, one, one thing I would tell you is that uh, if or when you, you become a part of the team, your face is going to be in a lot of videos, man. So just know that. <laughs> oh, I hate that. I hate that, but uh, that's uh, what Fractally does anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and maybe uh, maybe we're not doing it right uh, for a good reason. So maybe, uh, Marco, you'd be able to uh, help us along in that way. 
uh, at the same time, I don't know. And I, I, I uh, right now, Doug and I are like, I'm like, uh, about recording everything. And right now we're recording almost everything. Uh, that may change. Uh, but uh, yeah, good one, Oscar. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the we don't need to make the recording. We don't need to make them public. Yes, we can, no, we no, can no, continue no. recording, but we can have different policies on on sharing what we're recording. So we might, you know, actually uh, hide and 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 secure some stuff. Uh, just keep it among us because it's valuable, and ha we we don't want it to be distributed. But are any of you guys from the city? Yes. Uh, City, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, the amount of cameras, no. <laughs> the amount of cameras in New York Metro, and it, especially if you're a runner, um, you know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and uh, technology is always a double-edged sword. Uh, fire has been used to burn down villages as well as cook our food. Uh, so the camera piece uh, falls right into that. We don't know how to use it for good versus, say, uh, hyper control and control breeds death. Maybe so. Oh, uh, uh, Oscar. all good questions. Yeah, hey. show yourself. <laughs> that's great. Nice that's to great. see. You. Yeah, thanks. Yes, that's good. Well, guys, I, I'd like to share something uh, regarding the, the last meeting we had uh, on Fractal on Saturday. It, uh, well, you can say it blew my mind. It changed my perspective. I had, uh, I, I probably connected to Dan's vision, like global vision, and. I, I'm I'm a lot more excited today than I was uh, during the first uh, fractal meetings because I think we are yes. going into into building we, we are witnessing uh, a birth of a new blockchain that I think is uh, yes. by the looks of it it's going to have a lot of uh, very cool features so yeah. I'm liking how, the way it's happening. And and this is, I've never been more excited in myself. Weeks. So we can make so after what happened after what happened, Shakur, is when you started asking questions, I think, of, of Dan specifically. And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is being recorded. I need a copy of this. And so then I asked my question about what can we do or is it okay to share and blah, blah, blah. So that happens. And that transition to this flood of conversation on Telegram, you know, that all this information is coming out. And now I feel like I have all this clarity and I'm so gung-ho with just going with this fractally thing, yet my OG EOS plebs are hating on Dan and calling it a scam and all this stuff. And I'm just like loving the drama of it all because I'm not afraid of confronting these kinds of alter perspectives or narratives and translating them, if you will, you know, in a way that's understandable. Mm -hmm. And so I feel, Marco, man, I, I, I need, I feel like someone of your caliber and background is like, trying to wrap my head around some of these ideas and articulate them or converse them is not like i'm not necessarily the best person but i sure start a lot of fires <laughs> it's like could you ask a lot of questions yeah. you know so <laughs> i felt like i don't always have the answers I, I, I think i can i can uh, also contribute to that fire to start and <laughs> yeah at least we got we got certain things cl clarified too and hey there's been communication uh, yeah. it, it came out a lot of people wanted the answers we you know we're getting them <laughs> now there's more questions yeah. and more speculation and more assertions and uh, whatever <laughs> yeah I, I would like uh frankly to organize and ask uh, uh the enf uh with a little bit of leverage with a little bit of strength to please fund uh the fractally updates to the eos code and integrate the whole thing for the future if it's feasible but i don't know i don't i think it's probably not feasible actually i don't even a think it's like it looks like it looks like uh dan is tired of waiting already and he made his decision he made his mind and he said you know what i'll just fund it myself and uh, i'll just fund a new blockchain he and... said that and he didn't he say that, that. I, wasn't, I wasn't the oh, same. Did, did he did no did i mean say... i wasn't the same i wasn't the same room than he, than he was and mm -hmm. he said, I am funding, I'm funding everything. I'm paying, I'm paying everything myself. And at the time we were like, all right, but what are your contributions? And he was like, I am paying. Those are my contributions. But, I mean, at, at the same time, yeah, it, it is a big contribution, but it kind of leaves the question in the room like, all right, but again, paying doesn't seem to be a direct contribution. You're paying someone to do the contributions. No, no, no. So it kind of started a, a different yeah, discussion yeah. there too, yeah, but I, I do, he, 
he let it clear that that he's doing it. He's just taking the matter in its own hands. Yes, yes, and it's uh, and it's uh, obvious that it's going to be easier to just build a new blockchain that will be solely, like, primary uh, goal of this blockchain is to hold all the information that we are producing during these meetings. So it will be more suitable for this. And, Besides, uh, he said the whole thing is open source. So if you want to 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 grab the same features, you can just do it. Just can you can yeah. just go ahead and, and take yes. it to. Yes, but he is not open sourcing things that are in development right now because oh, ENF ENF has hired somebody who then wanted to hire. So <laughs> if mm. Yes, hunted somebody from, you know, same people as Dan. And, and ENF is using Dan's ideas and developing them without Dan. And that is the conflict that I see right now. And, that, and I see that that's why Dan is doing things behind closed doors, revealing some of the information a little bit uh, and, and still holding uh, the meetings. But uh, I, I see it as a good thing. I mean, this is how it's going to work and work out, but it's not going to be uh, like asking EOS to change. It's going to be a new blockchain that will prob most probably be integrated with EOS. It's going to be cross uh, these IBT, cross cross blockchain exchanges will, be, right. you know, we don't need EOS. All right. We can All do right. it so separately. Five, yeah. five minutes. I just want to say, take it away. yeah, I just want to say this real minutes. quick. I, I followed pretty closely. Uh, and caught up with and commented on all of the chat or most all of it in eating the OS and in factly this weekend since it all started because it's happening like real time. And my conclusion from it all is there is really no problem. And the way things are going is probably the best way because it allows Dan to pursue his creative direction with the, with the least inhibitions and it doesn't impose any risk or cost onto the EOS ecosystem. And essentially we as the participants are the people who are, uh, are making that gamble and he wants to reward us for contributing to it. And if this all works out, we can come then come back and bring that back to the US community with a proven track record, which is what they want. Because Dan can't answer all the questions that uh, the ENF wants answered. He can't scope it out because he's sort of like his doing it, you know, discovering his way, doing it his way and doesn't want to give it all up. So I, I feel like everything's just fine now after all, all that I read. I don't know if anyone else sees it that way. I, I see myself an uh, opportunity to become a block producer in this new blockchain. If there's new blockchain, yeah, me too. Yeah, we there are, you go. I like it. We are in, that takes a lot of effort and a lot of, a lot of infrastructure. No, no, no. Hey, I have a group if you want to join. I'm, I'm learning about it. <laughs> hey, real quick. Uh, here, uh, here, here's what I propose. Uh, Marco, drop off. Let's take us four for a quick post Marco discussion. Uh, and then we move forward, take the opportunity of all of us being able to be together right now. That's tricky. Uh, Mark, yes. So Marco's gone. That's great. Uh, so here, real quick, guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, first off, I think that was successful. Uh, thank you to each of you. Basically, I think we can all thank each other because that was that was pretty. First uh, time, first time together for us. Yeah. Wow. Cameras. All right, cool. So this is kind of a closed thing. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. I'm stopping now.